Invasive European green crabs, one of the world's 100 worst invaders, have been detected in southeast Alaska. Invasive species are a big problem and have created growing concerns for Alaskans. Good morning, folks. Thanks for joining us today. Folks have come from all over the state to be here. We're here for a really important reason. The European green crab is something that I think all of us all of us care about because it impacts the resources that we care about that we're trying to protect. So looking forward to, forward to the next few days. I'm Ashley Leto. I'm the Invasive Species Outreach and Education Coordinator for the Alaska Region of U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. And invasive green crabs threaten the way of life of all the Alaskans. Um, they threaten our ecosystems, environment, and the cultural and recreational resources that we all rely on. European green crab arrived on the west coast of North America in the late 1980s. They were first confirmed in San Francisco Bay in 1989. From San Francisco Bay, they've been able to spread primarily northward using currents that disperse their earliest life stages. And in that way, they spread up the West Coast. Uh, by 1997-98, they were in Oregon, Washington, and British Columbia. And since that time, they've been continuing to spread northward in, until we're seeing them just in the very recent past in Alaska for the first time. Uh, my name is Ben Wishnick. I'm the Early Detection and Rapid Response Project Coordinator for the Fish and Wildlife Service for Southern Alaska. The, the Fish and Wildlife Service, in collaboration with our other partners within the Alaska Invasive Species Partnership, uh, got together and recognized the need for, for us to collectively respond to any new infestations of European green crab in the state. So the exercise that we're doing uh, today over the next few days is going to try and accomplish like getting everybody ready. So we have uh, a plan that's written up, but we want to take it for a test drive and see how it works and see where uh, see where the nuts and bolts of everything there might be squeaks so we need to that we need to make little adjustments so after that we'll be able to go go back and and to work together to look at how plan looks and see how that reflects the reality of what's actually going to happen on the ground my name is chris holdreed i'm the director of the cassettes the bay laboratory so those coastal currents um transport fish larvae anything that is free swimming um and one of the things for green crab is they have a planktonic or a free free-floating part of their life stage, which will be carried by currents. And so the transport northward along the coast um, is during that stage of their life. Uh, my name is Catherine Shakey, and I'm the manager at the Kachemak Bay National Estuarine Research Reserve here in Homer. We thought it was very important to gather and talk about and prepare for early detection of the species and what to do when they show up. The first and most important thing that communities can do uh, to help with the early detection of European green crab is to properly identify them. What the green crab looks like, so five spines um, and on each side of the eyes, and they're not always green, that's important to keep in mind. We have a lot of outreach materials available for this, but people need to know what it looks like so they know how to find it, because if we can minimize the harm caused by them, we can hopefully have sustainable communities and livelihoods into the future. and. Uh, minimize the damage that they can cause to our natural resources. As we have been watching them move up the coast, we have started to prepare by supporting community-based early detection monitoring as a um, early detection method. My name is Jasmine Maurer, and I work at the Kachemak Bay National Estuary Research Reserve in Homer, Alaska. I am the Harmful Species Program Coordinator, and we monitor for marine invasive species and harmful algal blooms in Kachemak Bay. European green crab impacts on the east coast of the United States, their um, numbers have impacted and, and a major contributing factor to the collapse of the soft shell clam industry on the east coast of the United States. Response to the threat of invasive European green crab is not going to be a one agency or a one person response in the state of Alaska and having everyone uh, working together and doing what they can or elevating awareness with their friends and neighbors is really going to be what moves us forward in protecting our resources that we all love Alaska for. My name is Stephen Payton. I'm the environmental coordinator for the Seldovia Village Tribe. We're out there every day collecting subsistence resources or just exploring and um, 
it's a big problem and subsistence is kind of done on a small scale so I think that that impact is going to be magnified for us um, and the effects that it has on so many resources like clams and salmon, herring, um, all of them. The Canadian East Coast parks, um, they were recognizing that um, areas that where green crab were present, they were losing eelgrass habitat. So much so that as they were doing restoration projects, the green crabs could destroy more than they could restore in a day. You know, for people who have dealt with invasive species in other parts of the country, other parts of the world, this is a much bigger issue to which European green crab are kind of the newest, the newest one coming online in our coastal communities. If you catch a new invasive species early, it's still possible to eradicate it entirely, or um, it requires very uh, it's a low-cost activity or s requires a small amount of resources to get in there and, and reduce the population significantly. By the time the public is aware of invasive species infestations, usually it is impossible to eradicate a species and it is too expensive to do so everywhere and you really have to prioritize and accept that you will have a lot of damage from the species. You can help out by volunteering for community monitoring programs such as the one here in Ketchumac Bay. Uh, you can do molt walk surveys, even something as simple as while you're out for a walk along the beach. You can be looking down at crab shells that you find, and if you find something that looks like a European green crab, uh, report it. And that's another really important part. And if we find it early, then we can concentrate our efforts on key trapping locations to reduce the populations and hopefully protect our eelgrass habitat, protect our shellfish. My name is Tammy Davis. I'm the Invasive Species Program Coordinator for the Alaska Department of Fish and Game. A European green crab could potentially have very drastic impacts on those areas. And you can make a difference. You can be part of the solution. So just looking for green crabs uh, when you're out in the water can, can potentially change how uh, negative the impact is.